So big bold line across your notes. We're going to move on into our other type of compound, okay, our other type of uh, bonding that can happen, and that's with our covalent bonds. So covalent compounds. And I'm combining quite a few sections into this one. This is going to cover sections 5.5, 5.6, 5.5 um, just introduces covalent compounds. 5.6 talks about naming and writing the covalent formulas. And then we're going to kind of picking and choosing the information from 5.7. Okay, so I don't recommend reading 5.7. Um, basically, this is going to distinguish. We have two different types of covalent bonds. Okay. So combining those three sections together. Now, just like we did with ionic compounds, it's helpful to look at an example. So I would like you to predict the compound be formed between nitrogen and oxygen. So hopefully one of the things that you may be looking at is kind of going through the process we did for our ionic compounds. Nitrogen has a three negative charge. Oxygen with a two negative, right? So we can't do a cross charge because they're not attracted to their opposite charge, right? Okay, nitrogen wants electrons, so does oxygen. Okay, so they don't have that opposite charges attract like they do with ionic. Okay, so we cannot balance our charges. In other words, it's not ionic. Okay, so it's covalent. So what's going to happen is rather than having this opposites attract, the nitrogen and the oxygen are actually going to share electrons in order to form a compound. Now, when we share electrons, there's a lot of different ways that we can share electrons. So covalent compounds don't have a fixed formula like ionic compounds do. Okay, ionic compounds, we had to balance the charges, so our formulas and our subscripts were, were fixed. We couldn't change those. Um, whenever we had two atoms uh, or two ions coming together, they had a certain formula. In the case of covalent compounds, because we're sharing these electrons, there's a number of different ways that these uh, two atoms can share electrons. Um, they can share them um, in a two to one. They can share them um, in a one to one or a one to two or something that violated what we looked at in ionic, they could share it in a two to two ratio. Okay, we, we don't have to reduce our subscripts like we did in the ionic compounds. So in order to reflect that we have these different options, we have to go about naming covalent compounds differently than we do for ionic compounds. Oh, and by the way, um, ionic compounds we call salts, okay, covalent compounds we call molecules. And just kind of a side note there. So we name our covalent compounds, okay, we want to include 
a prefix before the element name. And this is going to indicate the number of the, those atoms in the formula. So in ionic compounds, we indicated nothing about the formula. In covalent compounds, we have to include something about the formula, okay? Because it's not, we can't just call these each nitrogen oxide because we have four different compounds that we can possibly choose from. So we do have to actually include uh, information that this is a two, that's a one, that's a one, that's a one. And we do that by using prefixes. Now our prefixes, and these are your basic uh, geometric prefixes. Okay, and these were on your pre-lecture worksheet for this chapter. Okay, and they are um, hopefully nothing too new for you. There may be some... Um, ones that you haven't heard of very often, but you're gonna want to know one through 10. Okay. So one is mono, two is di, and we have tri and tetra, then penta, hexa, okay, pentagon, hexagon, you've probably heard of those shapes. Hepta is seven, maybe one, a new one that you haven't really heard much. Um, eight is octa, so octagon. Nine, nana, may not have heard of that one before. And 10 is deca. So we use these in front of our element names. Okay, to say how many are there. And then the last element gets the IDE ending. And there is one exception. And that is if the first element has only one, okay, a subscript of one, the mono is left off. And that's only for the first element. So if we wanted to go and name our compounds up here, okay, they're all going to have the basic nitrogen oxide and we're just now going to include our prefixes. So there's two nitrogens, so we have dinitrogen, monoxide, NO, we have one nitrogen, but here's where that exception comes in. We leave off the mono, okay, but we don't leave the mono off of the second one. So this is nitrogen, oops, monoxide. Our next one is nitrogen dioxide. And our last example we have is dinitrogen dioxide. So these are different than our ionic compounds in that we do have to include information about how many are in the formula.